Hello. In this lecture, we're going to discuss why we use radio frequencies. Generally, when we're using radio frequencies, we're trying to communicate or sense something without the need to have a direct physical connection, such as a wire. And we use high frequencies because we generally need an antenna if we want to interface without a wire. An antenna is basically doing an impedance match from free space or air, which is about 377 ohms to the impedance of a circuit, which can be anything, but in most radio frequency circuits, we choose a common reference of 50 ohms. Typical antennas are electrically large, meaning that they have a large physical dimension relative to the wavelength of the frequency that they're operating on. Uh, for instance, many antennas are approximately a quarter of a wavelength or larger. Because antennas are proportional to the wavelength that they're operating on, what this means is that at higher frequencies, we can make physically smaller antennas. So if we look at an example of an antenna, we see pictures on the left here that show an antenna farm, and there are actually many, many different types of antennas here. Uh, but one thing we notice this is that some of the antennas are quite large. These would typically be operating at lower frequencies, and some of the antennas are smaller. Uh, these might be operating at microwave and millimeter wave frequencies even. What we do see is that none of these antenna options uh, work very well if we're wanting to work with something very small, uh, like a cell phone. And what we see here is actually one of the Wi-Fi antennas on an iPhone. Another reason that we use radio frequencies is having to do with the information theory from, the, uh, from Shannon and Hartley that tells us that the information capacity of a channel is given by the bandwidth available in the channel times the log of the S and R of the channel. And what this means is that I can send more information across the channel. And here I've drawn a channel as being, say, my YouTube coming from my computer being transmitted wirelessly to uh, maybe a tablet that I'm holding. So I can send more information across the channel if the bandwidth B is bigger or if the S and R is bigger. What this generally means is that I could move closer to the transmitting antenna to improve my S and R or someone, perhaps one of you, makes a lower noise, wider bandwidth circuit. Generally, we talk about bandwidth in terms of the fractional bandwidth available. And our fractional bandwidth, we're going to define as the bandwidth of the signal that we're operating on uh, relative to the RF carrier bandwidth. Radio channels generally have fractional bandwidths that are on the order of 1% to 10%. Generally, the higher we operate in frequency, the larger the bandwidth that we have available to use. And what this means is that we can improve the quality of, band, uh, of the signals that we send. So we can send videos with higher resolution, or we can improve the latency of games that we play, things like that. There are a few other considerations that we also take into, effect, into consideration when we are determining why we use higher frequency. One of those is resolution. So with resolution, generally it's easier to resolve smaller objects at higher frequency. And the reason for this is that at higher frequency, we have a smaller physical wavelength of the, uh, of the carrier wave. The ability to resolve to a smaller object means that we can focus RF energy more exactly on a desired target for point-to-point -point comms, such as the beam forming example that's being shown in the picture or we can improve spatial resolution in a radar or many other things. Another important thing to consider is spectrum regulation. So in the spectrum regulation consideration, we consider that spectrum is a finite resource, meaning that 
that not everybody can use the same frequency at the same time. And so governments regulate what we can use in terms of the bandwidth and when we can use it. And generally there are more resources the higher we go in frequency. This is a chart of the US uh, frequency allocation ranging from a few hertz up to several terahertz. And generally what we see is that the lower frequency bands have already been used uh, quite extensively, but we do have opportunities to use higher frequency bands. So with that, we will talk about modulation next.